Good afternoon. This is Osiris with the Cover City News, Ankh Entertainment Stones in the Cover blog, and your weekly show host for 15 minutes. This is, uh, well, I can't say a special moment for me because I met this young woman, Erica Rodriguez, who we are interviewing today at the 18th Street Art Center here in Santa Monica, California. Um, I met Erica at a LACE, um, it was an event for LACE, Los Angeles Contemporary Exhibition, and I was so impressed with her camera work that as a photojournalist myself, I allowed her to take my photo and was very impressed. Erica. Hey. Say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so Erica is a photographer. She is, I would say she's upcoming to be one of the uh, contenders for the future here in uh, Los Angeles and in our country because she is of uh, Mexican descent. Uh, it is always nice to see people that are people of culture um, coming and stepping to the forefront. So Erica, tell us a little bit about how you got started doing photography. What, what did you do? I mean, what made you become interested in doing photography and doing art in general? Um, I became interested um, around high school. Uh, during that time, I actually had friends that loved taking pictures and I, as someone that loves also capturing the moments that I live with friends and families, I thought that maybe it'd be great if I got a camera, which I think my dad for getting me that. And um, I started just taking pictures of the most significant events in my life. Um, my like school what? years. Mm -hmm. um, I took pictures of my graduation, took pictures of um, school performances, took pictures of, um, of vacation trips, took pictures of just anything that just sounded like it was an amazing event or some point in my life where I wanted to get something to record for the and keep for myself for the rest of the years. Mm -hmm. So um, I started just taking pictures of me and my friends in school and from there it just kind of rolled on to becoming a photo editor for my yearbook class. Wow. And at first... Um, and what happened? Did somebody say something like, yeah, have you seen these photos of from Erica Rodriguez? Or <laughs> what happened for them, for you to for you to get recognized? Um, I think it definitely was in yearbook class when I started taking pictures of senior events. Um, I noticed that some of the pictures that I took and I showed to my... Um, professor, he really liked them and he also liked the ideas that I had for them. I actually came up with some of the layouts for the yearbook. Um, some of the events I decided to put my cre creative mind into it and I yeah. decided to put people in a certain position that would make them kind of uh, evoke a kind of story behind it and mm -hmm. he really liked it and so from there on I kind of had that inspiration to keep going on and keep doing photography. Mm -hmm. And then once I was in college, um, everyone took notice that I always had a camera at hand. Any event that I would go to, anywhere that I went, even just to eat dinner, I always had a camera and I liked taking pictures of my food yeah. and just anything that happened. And so um, my one of my professors for history of photography uh, really noticed, took notice that I really was interested in photography. So he invited me to be a documenter for the first art gallery at UC Merced. Oh, wow. So, um... Hot. Yeah, so from that <laughs> moment, I just took pictures of events similar to here at, at 18th Street Art Center, mm -hmm. where I go to every event, any, um, uh, meeting or just anything, um, art installation, workshops, um, I usually go to that and just take pictures of the action that's going on. And so I also, during the last few years of my school, I entered a, a art show contest yes. in which I, um, Did I you sent win? in. Yes, I <gasps> sent in one of my Are photos. Are you 
serious? What yes. art show contest? Or what school? What art show? You see, you see Merced Bobcat Art Show. And Merced, California. Merced, California. Okay, just so you guys know, Merced is up <laughs> north. It's up in Northern California. Right. Uh huh. And um, I, I had seen the art show though, like a year before I entered, and I noticed that some of my friends who entered, um, they had great pictures and. A lot of my friends encouraged me. They were like, "I think you would be able to win that show." But I was, I wasn't really sure if I was at the same level as everyone else. But I still gave it a try just because I knew everyone was really rooting for me to do it. Mm -hmm. So um, I entered, and I luckily won first place in photography. Wow! So um, I think that point also gave me that extra boost that I think photography was confidence. a great feel for mm -hmm. me to work in. So um, from there on out, I also got um, opportunities to work with school events and take pictures of um, people that came over to have talks, lectures, or even um, the graduation ceremony. Mm -hmm. So um, from there on out, I kind of thought that maybe I should um, keep exploring that side of photography, of event documentation, and um, just anything that comes up. I've done wedding and engagement pictures too. Wow. Uh, I had a friend who she really likes my photographs, so she asked me to do some of her engagement pictures. Mm -hmm. So I've done a little bit of that on the side as well. So I, I just love anything that I could just capture a certain A time. moment, an, emo yeah. an emotional expression. Emotional, right. So talk a little bit about how you got involved with lace. Lace. Um, well, now, like we, I explained to the audience what lace is. Uh huh. And so, talk to how did you transition from high school, uh, some college, uh -huh. and then you're working for lace, which is how I met you. And like right. I said, I was very impressed. Like, wow, <laughs> the world is changing. Right. <laughs> so, how did that happen? Um, for lace, I actually was looking online for um, internship opportunities. Oh. And I noticed that Lace had an opening for a documentation intern, which I thought was perfect because I looked through so many other art galleries, mm -hmm. and they mostly all had like archival intern or gallery guide or um, or production assistant, but it was never really documentation. And so when I saw Lace, I noticed that. They had this position which was similar to what I've done before so I decided to give it a try and go to lace and then I've heard so many stories about how many great events they've had yeah they do have some really nice stuff so um, I decided to apply for there mm -hmm. and luckily the next day I got um, an email saying that they wanted to have an interview with me mm -hmm. and um, the rest is history the rest of it yeah, actually the rest is her story <laughs> not history <laughs> anyway so now, going from Lace to this beautiful facility here in Santa Monica, the 18th Street Arts Center, what do you do here? What, what did you take on more responsibility? It looks like you upped the game some. I, I did. Um, <laughs> actually, I started here as a volunteer while I was at Lace. Oh, wow. Um, I uh, saw that they posted a, an announcement on the volunteermatch.org website mm -hmm. and they needed volunteers to help with public events so since I already had a little bit of event production as well at LACE mm -hmm. um, I decided I wanted to help them with their events so yeah. I emailed the development associate here she contacted me and she told me all the things I needed to know about the exhibition and when I should come and what I should wear and right after um, she looked through my resume and noticed that I did documentation at LACE and so she introduced me to Nicole, my supervisor. She's the director of communications and outreach. Oh wow. And she told her that, um, that I had done documentation at LACE mm -hmm. and it would be great if I would help with some of the documentation here. Okay. And so then um, after doing like a couple of public events and as well as um, being a volunteer photographer right after we had this little conversation, um, mm -hmm. they invited me to be an intern um, around February. Of this year? Of this year. Mm -hmm. And they asked me that they wanted me to also do image archiving. Wow. So I, I received photos and um, any other past photography that other photographers had used and I have um, organized it, compiled it in a form that they could 
find it. Mm -hmm. And I've also helped out with um, sending pictures to artists who want images or even the press. Right. I've uh, also helped them with writing um, some of the editing some of the newsletters and writing some of the artist biography here. Wow. Yeah. So you're really going into, you're actually heading into PR. Yeah. I you're heading into PR and journalism, the whole thing. Right. Fortunate for you, you know, that's some good training for you to have. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of people online that have no experience. Right. And I don't think people understand the difference between taking a camera and using it to do something professional versus you're shooting your family and friends. Right. And they say it's good. The public, just so you guys know people out here, take it from an experienced person. The public is who tells you that you're good. Not your family, not your friends. Right. Your family, your friends will see talent, perhaps. But if the public says you're good, and you go to a company like Erica did, and they say you're good, you're good. That's what it means, because shes they pay her to be good. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> she's built herself up enough to have that kind of background. So that's really important that uh, you, as a youth and a young person, mm -hmm tell people that it is there is a process of developing into these right. professional careers a lot of us started out I that's what I did I started out in college started modeling blah, blah, blah. Right. next thing you know I was doing this that, and the other next thing you know I was doing this that, and the other next thing you know yeah. you know so it does go on especially you have a love and desire for art art type stuff yeah. now how has your family embraced your career as a Mexican American as your family, are they old school Mexican American? Do they speak English? Do they speak Spanish? Or are they bilingual? Um, well, my parents uh, speak a little bit of English, but yeah. not perfectly yet. Yes. And so, um, but they've been really supportive. I've always been the person that in interprets for them anything uh, that they need help with, papers that they receive, or if we have to go to doctor appointments, uh -huh. I help them out with that too. Mm -hmm. But um, no, they've been really supportive. They haven't really been those traditional, um, I guess, Mexican people. There you go. Yeah. That, that yeah. want you to study a specific field or don't encourage you to yeah. go into other industries or fields as well and so my parents have actually first right before doing anything else for just the sake of it or for money it's mm -hmm. it's mostly what you want to do in your heart yeah and so i have always taken those words in and i've always looked at what i liked first and art has always been something that i've loved to do and i love that it just inspires you and allows you to be lim limitless mm -hmm. with anything you do yes and so um I think that my parents, even though they're Mexican, um, they have really adapted, I guess, you can say to the American ways mm -hmm. where they just, they encourage you to do what you want most. Mm -hmm. But um, in Mexico, from what I've noticed, a lot of people just go into the same fields, whether it's accounting, yeah. uh, law, or even um, they do engineering, environmental yeah, Which are good. Those are good the, fields. Those are good. and. And not everyone really achieves in that field mm -hmm. because there's not really a lot of work right now for those. Oh, okay. It, it, it's kind of a struggle um, looking for an engineering job over there just mm -hmm. because um, there isn't really much to do with civil engineering and so people just get into environmental. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't really like going with what everyone does. I like to kind of yeah, do my own thing. Have you hear your own drummer. You yes. hear your own beat and your own rhythm. <laughs> right. So um, you recently made a trip back to Northern California. Right. And I asked you to provide us with some photos, of which we're going to show when we do the article. Erica okay. sent me those photos. So okay. everyone's going to be really excited and seeing them. So talk a little bit about what your trip was about, why you went, what you got from it. Right. And tell us a little bit about that. Okay. So... I went on a trip to Mexico um, for the reason that I had a cousin that was getting married mm -hmm. and I actually had not seen her since I was probably like three or four years old. Oh wow, so, so it's it, a reunion. It was a reunion, uh -huh. it really was. And so my brother, he was like, let's go to this trip. We haven't seen this family in years and I think it'd be great to reconnect with people again and to kind of form a stronger bond now that we'd see each other, now that we're grown up and maybe keep more in contact. And 
you know, um, be able to know more of what's going on with each other. Right. So we went on this trip and it was actually really amazing because usually I just go to um, my parents' state, which is Durango. Mm -hmm. What is it, Dumanga? Durango. Du oh, Durango. Like I know where for Durango area. is, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so um, we usually, when we go to trips to Mexico, it's just Durango all the time. And sometimes the, the neighboring state of Zacatecas, but it's only for like a short trip to go to Zacatecas, just to go to a church. So um, this time we decided to also go to another state, mm -hmm. and we went to um, Sinaloa, Mazatlán. Wow, say a little slower, más despacio, por favor. Mazatlán, Sinaloa. Mas Mazatlán. Mas oh, it's A-Z-T-L-A-N, that's how you yeah. say that word? Yeah, Mazatlán. Mazatlán, uh-huh. Sinaloa. Sinaloa. Sinaloa is a state. Sinaloa is a state, wow. Yeah. And is that near Mexico or? That's actually, those states are in the northern east side of Mexico. Wow. Uh -huh. Actually, northern west side of Mexico. Right. And so, um, it's, Mazatlan is actually now three hours and a half of distance from Durango. It wow. used to take a long time to go to Durango because um, there was an old highway that took nine hours and it oh, had wow. so many um, turns and, yeah. and it just took forever for people to get through one state to the other, but uh -huh. um, in this trip, I got to um, go to Mazatlan for the first time. And I've heard of Mazatlan. I've never been there, and I didn't know that that it was silent like that. Yeah, because I think the Americans say Atzlan or something. Yeah, it's a, they say it weirdly. But it's great though. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, and it was great because I've never been to Mexico beaches before, oh, so wow. it was very beautiful. Um, the ocean is really nice and warm, and nice light blue and the people there are always on party mode and friendly <laughs> they really friendly are friendly and warm <laughs> they're oh, friendly and warm and always singing and dancing on the street they're also Aww. very active you see people jogging and running oh down so it's really a walk. nice sport sports people yeah. are energetic and get out and do exercise right so wow so it's really nice oh, this is so wonderful and you you don't know how your story is going to encourage so many people that are sitting around in their homes talking about the system is against them and this, that, and the yeah. other. And here is Erica Rodriguez, people, that did not let her heritage, her culture, her... Now, did you know, how, were, you bi were you raised bilingual or did you bother to learn English? Um, I was raised bilingual because of school. Since I was a child, I was put into um, a daycare center. Oh. And everyone, everyone there spoke English. But yeah, at home it was just Spanish. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, so I got the best of both worlds. You I got did. to learn Spanish at home and from native speakers, and then I got to learn English from um, my daycare mommy, uh -huh. or mommy, and um, all my friends at school. Isn't that wonderful? So you not only have the gift of being talented mm -hmm. at what you do, you have the gift of being bilingual, which is like a very... Uh, that's like something you almost have to have now with all of the right. influx of... Asia and Hispanic culture, you know, in this country. Right. So that's great. Now, if you had to, we're going to wrap it up here, people. I want you, Erica, I want you to give any information of how someone would contact you if they wanted to use your services as a okay. photographer, as a documentarian for any kind of specific projects, because don't forget, we can't still her. She does work for 18 Art Center. <laughs> but you can call her and she can do things on in special projects herself independently. Okay. So what is what is that information? Um, you can contact me at my email. It's erirodriguez07 at gmail.com. I'll spell it out for you. Thank you. E-R-I-R-O-D-R-I-G-U-E-Z zero seven at gmail.com right and do you have any facebook pages pinterest um, i do have a tumblr page yes and what's that page it's called a uh, photo dash chromatic eyes uh -huh. dot Tumblr.com. Okay, and it's chromatic C H R O M A T I C dash E Y E S, or is it some kind of fancy E Y E Z? No, it's the way you spell chromatic. Okay, great. Yeah. And eyes is the same way you spell eyes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so people go on there and support Erica. Uh -huh. I'm a member of Tumblr. I love Tumblr because uh -huh. it's good for posting photos right. and all of that. So let's go on and support Erica now. This has been another Unk Entertainment Stones in the Color of Rare blog. Yeah. And the cover CD News interviewing this beautiful young woman that I am going to know the rest of my life. I'm <laughs> going to be so involved in your growing up. So I'll be Aww, a 
Uh, auntie. auntie. I'll be your auntie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Erica, and thank okay. the 18th Street Art Center for having us over here. If anybody wants to know more information about the 18th Street Art Center, Erica, go. You can talk to me at 18th Street Arts. Um, I'm their documentation intern. So anytime you have any questions or just want to know more about it, just hit me up. Also give your address at the 18th Street Arts it's, Center and your and the phone number here. Um, I actually don't have that memorized. The okay. Number and the number of the address, but it's between 18th Street and Olympic Boulevard. Mm -hmm. It's the third building down right across from um, New Road School. Um, elementary and high school. There you go. And if you want to Google the 18th Street Art Center, it is the first Google that comes up on the page. Yeah. So use your tools, people. No problem. If Erica <laughs> didn't remember, we can always find about yes. it out on Google. <laughs> Thank you again, Erica, for Thank your time. You. you are just as beautiful now as you were the first day I met. <laughs> Thank you. We met, and I am just so happy, and good luck to you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. That's a wrap. <laughs> Bye. Bye.